Hello to all, welcome to the channel GeoGuru. In this video, we are going to learn about intensity duration frequency curve, also known as IDF curve. So this kind of curve look like this and it is a very important curve in the field of hydrology and hydraulics. So let's see uh, what is actually IDF curve is and what is its application. So uh, as it name suggests, it is intensity duration frequency. That means it describes the relationship between the rainfall intensity, the rainfall duration and the return period also known as frequency or probability of exceedance. So this curve will uh, define the relation between these three things. Uh, it is commonly used in the design of hydrologic and hydraulic structure, specifically in the water resource system. And this curve can be obtained through the frequency analysis of rainfall distribution. So uh, we are going to learn how we are going to develop this IDF curve from the rainfall data set from the scratch. So for that purpose, uh, we are going to use the Microsoft Excel. So this is our rainfall data set. It is a TRMM rainfall data set. Those TRMM are satellite rainfall data which provide the three hourly uh, rainfall duration uh, for entire world. So it comes uh, with the mm per hour for three hour duration. So in order to convert uh, mm per three hour or per six hour or pine, uh, per nine hour, we are going to uh, multiply this by three. Okay. So now this intensity becomes three hour uh, uh, in mm data set. So in order to convert it three hour into six hour, because we are uh, focusing on getting the annual maxima. So we are not uh, going to make from three hour to six hour in every six hour alternate duration. We are, but we are going to get that information for every three hours. So for that purpose, we are going to use the sum and add these two values. And similarly for nine hours, we are going to add three values from three hours. That makes 9 hours and similarly for 12 hours, we will add the 4 values. For 18 hours, we are going to add the 6 values. Now we are interested in getting the IDF for up to 72 hours. So please make sure that uh, this is a three hourly duration. So uh, every duration is in the multiple of three. If you are using hourly data set, it can be like one hour, two hour, or every single hour. So if you are getting to using 24 hour of rainfall data set, so for that, uh, using that, you are, uh, get the IDF curve for every 24 hour interval. That means 24, 36, uh, sorry, not 24, 48, 72, etc. So after that, we are going to uh, extract the annual maxima. And in order to do that, please make sure that one of the column had, should have the date uh, and the month inside that. Uh, so what we will do, we will go to the insert in the Microsoft Excel, go to the pivot table and click on this from table to date. And please make sure that all the rows and columns uh, in which your data set have is selected. Let's, uh, select OK. And here we are going to select the dates. Okay, so now you can see that uh, all the years in a single row have come up and uh, we will add three hour. So make sure that the date column should be in the rows and the value you are interested should be in the value cell. So here it is the sum of three hour. We are not interested in the sum, but we are interested in the uh, maximum. So similarly for six hours, if you just drop down, click over here. Uh, value field settings and click on maximum. So similarly, we are going to do this for 9, 12, 18, 24, 36, 72, 48, 72. So in order to uh, convert this sum to max, you can right click over here, show summarize value as max. Okay, so we have get the annual maxima for each and every year. Now we are going to copy this values and paste into a new worksheet. Okay, so we will just 
copy this and open another so this is the sheet uh, I have used going to use I'll just going to paste this and I'm going to paste it as a values okay so now you can see this uh, all the data set that means annual maxima for each and every duration has come up now we are going to I'll just zoom it a little bit uh, so next step uh, is to get uh, the IDF values okay so uh, in order to get the IDF values uh, from uh, literature uh, which I'm going to going to cite in the vid, uh, description of this video the formula which we are going to use is the xt is equal to x bar plus kts so where xt is the precipitation depth for a calcul uh, written period or for a specific duration and where x bar is the mean the average uh, uh, of all the annual maximum a standard deviation and kt is the frequency factor and in order to calculate the frequency factor we are going to use the gumball distribution formula okay and the gumball distribution formula is this where uh, t uh, here is the uh, year in which we are interested okay so in this case we are going to calculate like uh, for one in two years one in five years up to one in thousand years okay so by using this formula we have calculated the value kt and write it over here that means for two uh, written period two years written period five year written period we are getting the kt value as 0 0.720 this is the formula uh, we are going to provide this excel sheet for your reference purpose you can uh, use this so next thing that we are going to require is the average of annual maxima with the standard deviation so in order to get the average i'm going to use the average formula we just tried and this we are going to do for every duration and similarly we are going to use the standard deviation okay so now uh, mathematically if you just think that uh, over the 20 years the average 3 hour maxima is 52 so if you are going to talk about like 1 in 20 years so the maximum value in this maybe lie uh, in between about uh, maybe 30, uh, not the 20 years but 1 in 10 maybe lie in uh, near about 52 uh, with a standard deviation of 15 that's why if you see that uh, for 10 years of written period the multiplication factor is 1.3 okay but how um, it may be slightly bit different because it totally depends on the number of years of data which you are using so it is John, uh, normally suggested that it should be more than 20 years or maybe 15 to 20 or more than that the more data set you use the more accuracy you will get okay so now uh, we are going to apply this formula uh, in order to calculate the xc that means our rainfall depth so we are going to use the plus bracket standard deviation multiply by kt and bracket close so we are going to drag this formula but before that we are going to put the dollar sign and i hope everyone here know the importance of this dollar sign in the microsoft excel I'll just drag this and drag this and let's check in one of the formula for so yes uh, this multiply by this and into this so uh, this is uh, we have got the rainfall tip in order to create the IDF curve so when I say rainfall depth that means uh, for uh, this area if we talk about uh, one in thousand years 24 hour rainfall the rainfall depth is equal to 73.1 okay so in order to make this uh, in a beautiful graphical pre presentation i'll just use any two columns and go to the insert use this plot okay and just drag all other durations 
okay so now in the x axis we have the number of return periods and in the y axis we have a rainfall in mn okay so we are going to uh put this value as a log axis in the base of 10 so now it is looking more nice so this is your final idf curve but here the x axis is in the uh, sorry y axis in the mm that means okay uh, in the millimeters not in the mm per hour okay it might happen then some of the literature uh, might give you this uh, rainfall uh, this idf curve because the name intensity is there so this is should not be uh, sometimes it's not be in the mm but in the mm per hour so what you can do you you can just simply uh, i'll just uh, or before that uh, uh, it can also be represented uh, by some other manners like you can just select this two rows and go to the insert and go to this 2d line okay so now uh, in the x-axis we have duration in the y-axis with the rainfall mm you can drag it over here or before that if you go to the form chart design select data and in the name we are going to give two okay so similarly we are going to track this graph but i can see that this graph is not looking right, uh, right because this duration should not be like increasing and decreasing so let's check what we have done anything wrong so in order to check this uh, make uh, show that this value should be in in the increasing order as we increase the duration so we can see the 76 91 93 oh so here uh, we can see that for bigger duration we are getting the smaller values uh, let's just cross check uh, with the previous pivot table so in this previous table also we are getting the similar value if we go to the rainfall okay we'll just cross check the formula okay for six hours we are getting good for nine hours the formula is okay oh so you can see that for 12 hours and maybe for other hour we are actually added the mm per hour we should add the three hour uh, that means uh, the value in the mm so we will just rectify it and for i think for all other duration we have to do this similar thing so it's a good habit to create uh, your own formula or your own excel sheet so that you can debug it very easily okay so you can use this uh, excel sheet as a reference uh, i'll just go to the pivot table and if you go to the pivot table so go to analyze and click on refresh so now you can see that we have updated but yes for 72 and for 18 we haven't updated and for 72 also we should update now if we go to the pivot table and let's just refresh it once again oh now we are getting the result is good okay so now it may happen that this value might not increase in the uh, next uh, duration but it should not decrease so we will just copy this once again and go to the ids paste this as a value now our average has been changed now our graph is looking much nicer okay so the next thing that what i was telling that sometimes it is not necessary that uh you may get uh, IDF curve in the rainfall mm you might get x y axis in the mm per hour so for that purpose uh, we can this is a similar sheet uh, we can use this average and divide this for a specific duration okay so for example this is the mm per three hours so in order to convert this mm per three hour into mm per hour we are going to divide this by okay and 
and similarly we are going to use the dollar sign and let's just cross check we have done something mistake okay so this dollar sign instead of putting dollar sign over here and now you can use this similar formula so now you can see that now graph is in the mm per hour so this is also uh, your idf curve look like if you are using the mm per hour and if you are using not the m intensity but the depth your graph is look like this so and how to use this graph suppose if you want to design a structure uh, which has a lag time of like 4 hour okay or maybe it's like 12 hour okay so you can see that for 12 hour and if you want to design for the 100 years so for 12 hour 100 year we are getting the rainfall as approximately 137.5 so this is be your should be design storm value and this value is going to uh, you uh, used for uh, creating the design flood hydrographs and for any other purpose or maybe modeling purpose flood modeling purpose so that's it for the day uh, hope you uh, like the video and find this video informative if so then please hit the like button share this video and subscribe to the channel thank you